Hello all and welcome to the channel. Today, a video on my newest buy on eBay, a Seiko Pogue from around 1971. So depending on originality and condition, uh, I either got a very good deal or a very bad deal. So what I'm going to be looking for here, and I'm going to be opening these in front of you, so I'm going to be discovering right now, uh, is originality, of course. So, as you know, these Seiko Pogues, um, they are old watches and they have, they have been very much tampered with. Meaning, uh, Franken watches, you get a lot of Franken watches, you get a lot of, uh, of aftermarket dials, aftermarket bezels, aftermarket bracelets, you name it. You have every aftermarket piece that you can, you have in this watch. So, it becomes very, very tricky to find a good example. So, let's get to it. Okay, it appears to be running. You don't have um, a second hand in these Seikos. So, first thing I'm going to do is a visual check. So, it's hard through camera, but the dial looks... appears to be original. I really wanted I mean, the water 70 meter resist, which denotes a watch from around 1970 to 1972. The bezel appears to be original. I'm a bit worried about the bezel insert because it's all faded, but it appears to be faded from blue, which gives this white gray look. So that might not be too bad. And uh, it appears coherent with the fading of the dial. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. But the dial is pretty faded as well. And the bezel insert. It doesn't look as bad as in the pictures that I saw. And it appears to be original as well. So let's see the back of the watch. And as you can see from the serial number. This watch was made in February 1971. So... Continuing with the originality check, the bracelet, I don't know enough to say if that is a real, if that is a true original, but given the condition, it appears to be, especially the condition of the clasp, as you can see. And as you can see, it's a very cheaply made bracelet. Uh, characteristic of the 70s. So that was the originality check. So I have to say that so far so good and that is a good surprise. Okay, number two, second check. Let's see if the watch runs. So the best way is to set the chronograph and it appears to be running. Resetting to zero, no problem, and restarting again, it appears to be good. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be checking something else, which is the rotating bezel. So the rotating bezel should rotate with the crown. What you can usually see in these models is a rotating be bezel, the inner rotating bezel that doesn't rotate anymore. So this one does. So that is very good. And it means that the pinion is well engaged with the, I mean, rotating mechanism is well engaged with the, uh, with the crown. And that is very good news. So the chronograph keeps on running. That's good. I'm going to see if the if setting the time, I'm going to stop the chronograph just to set the time, just in case something goes wrong. So I'm going to set the time, pulling pulling up the uh, crown, and let's set the time so it's uh, 
728. So 728 p.m. 7 and 28. Okay, and the date setting mechanism works. As you can see, the 6139 movements have a quick date set and you do that by pushing here and that does seem to work and today is indeed a Wednesday and today is Wednesday the 22nd so let's go ahead I'm happy to see that works too okay so third check that I'm gonna do is a check of the uh, condition of the watch. I mean, as I already stated, there is some fading, of course, which is not bad, which I actually like because I like vintage watches and I like that they've been used. Let's see about uh, if it's been over polished. Polished, I'm sure it's been polished, but let's see if it's been over polished. So I have to check these. I mean, there's definitely some polishing. If the case back is something to judge from, uh, the case back appears to be almost not polished. I mean, not very much polished. You can read clearly the numbers, the markings. You can read everything clearly. But the case itself, has it lost? It has definitely lost some definition, but it's not too bad. The other check that I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through the time grapher and see if this watch needs servicing. I'm almost sure that it does need servicing. But if it needs servicing, uh, it's going to cost me, I mean, here in France, it's going to cost me quite a bit of money. So, this is the first bad news. It will surely surely needs some servicing as you can see the rate well it's all over the place going from minus 20 to minus 100 and something to plus 2 plus 3 it's all over the place so this definitely C plus 7 there and I've been running this for some time so it's definitely gonna need a service especially if one looks at the amplitude an amplitude of 141 that's very bad that's an indicator that the watch definitely needs servicing and amp a good amplitude for um, a vintage watch uh, is going to be about uh, 250 to about 300 126 is very bad this indicates that it's going to need some servicing and see it went from uh, minus 7 or plus 7 to minus 53 and then it's going to jump again as you can see the the curve the curve is all over the place okay let's take a look at the movement this one's not very hard to open So, let's see, it appears to be an original, in any case, an original 8139B. I don't see rust in there, so that is a good sign. I don't know if you can make it out, but the column wheel is there. Let's see the workings of the chronograph. So chronograph starting, engaged, as you can see. Chronograph stopped. 
and it has stopped and chronograph reset and it's been reset perfect so I've set the date and I've set the time I'm going to be checking with my other watch and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to I mean I gave the watch a good shake the 6139 movement is a non-hacking, non-hand winding, so you have to uh, uh, give it power via the old Seiko way of doing the Seiko shuffle. So I've done that quite a bit, and uh, I'm going to see if it runs. I'm going to let it run without touching it through the night, and I'm going to see if it still runs. Of course, it's going to keep awful timekeeping, of course, but... The aim here is to see if it keeps on running because I suspect that the power reserve is or something else is very very bad. So I'm going to check that and uh, I'll check back tomorrow to see how it went. So we are already tomorrow. Isn't video editing wonderful? So I'm happy to report that uh, the watch kept running the whole night and not only did it run but it's running and keeping pretty accurate time okay something very strange is going on and uh, whenever i run i start running the chronograph um, the timekeeping gets much better the amplitude gets a bit better uh, with these japanese uh, chronographs which are common wheel and have a vertical clutch, you have to keep them running, not to damage the movement, not to damage the, the clutch, actually. Whenever I run the chronograph, everything's pretty good. As you can see, the amplitude got better at 207. There's no bit error, and uh, we're just at plus 16, which for a watch of this era is very good. If we sum it up, then... If I don't have to service it, I get a pretty good deal, pretty sweet deal. I, of course, will have to take it to a professional in any case, just to have it looked at and to see if it's necessary to do a service. And I'll have, of course, to research and see if it's normal uh, to have that bad timekeeping whenever the chronograph is not running and uh, to have just a very decent timekeeping and amplitude whenever the chronograph is running. Pretty strange. Maybe it's always supposed to be, I don't know. I will find out. So I have a lot of homework. Uh, I might do a follow-up video whenever I'm more knowledgeable of this watch. And uh, well, we'll post it and uh, I hope I, I have answered, I will have answered some questions that I have and you that and that you may also have just before i go one special note i do put some effort in these videos so i would very much appreciate if you could subscribe to uh, keep me motivated in making them so make sure to hit that subscribe button and i'll be seeing you in the next video goodbye